welcome back to my channel jordan mind body and soul we learn to take care of ourselves mind body and soul and today's video is about how it feels to be the average looking black girl now this is to be taken within a certain context right that's not saying that i feel like oh i'm just average or anything like that but that's to say in comparison to not only my personal experiences that i've had but also the way society treats and um, handles people who are considered to be average looking. Okay, so to put things in perspective a bit, when I am saying average and I'm speaking on personal experiences, I'm saying that in this context, I've never been the girl to be first selected. Like, oh my God, she's so fine, first selection. And I've never been the one that was like, mm -mm. I fell right in the middle. Where it's like, is she available? Okay, is she not? Okay. It was a very average um, upbringing, <laughs> I feel. Um, I don't feel like it was until college to where I noticed I might be like high average, but still very average. And again, like I said, this is layered. This goes into many different things. So for me personally, I feel like I am a black woman and I am a black woman with a lighter complexion. So for whatever reason still in society unfortunately lighter skinned women are still deemed um either more beautiful or selected first which makes no sense to me at all but i do see a little bit of favoritism in that aspect but then again for me i have you know a, i have a wider nose i have a kinkier hair texture i have bigger lips so i have more features that are ethnocentric which is i mean it is what it is i love it but because of that i feel like it kind of mixes it in and i don't have like the the straight nose and the the slender face that people may see and associate with lighter skinned women so i don't feel like i receive favoritism in that sense which i wouldn't want anyway because i want people who are going to like me for who i am not like me based off of features so in that context i feel like it's always been a fair playground where people aren't selecting me based off of those superficial characteristics which i love which i adore because it keeps you from getting so much more bs and so much more drama now this is also to say i do know that women who are considered to be more attractive or more you know beautiful they're not exempt from running into bad people or bad experiences um people are who they are if you're a gorgeous person someone can cheat on you because they're a cheater if, if that's who they are if you're a person who most people may not deem as being beautiful, someone can still cheat on you because they're a cheater. That's who they are. So it doesn't necessarily have anything to do with that in that context. And I can have a whole nother video on explaining that. But this is just, again, my experience on what I feel like being average is. So most of my context is just based off of dating in society as well as social media and just the different things that we can't help but be introduced to. So to start off, when I say average, what I mean is I'm not super girly. I don't get super dolled up. I'm not super dressed up or fancy, makeup done, hair done, nails, all that stuff done. Literally, the way you see me right now is the way I look 95% of the time. If you were out and you call me at HEB, this is exactly how I would look. Like I'm usually in some type of leisure or athletic clothing. Um, <laughs> rarely ever, like if I have makeup on, it's usually just mascara or lip gloss, unless it's my birthday. On my birthday, I get dressed up. How you see me now is how I look most of the time. So I also try to make sure that my videos are like that because this is the real me. I used to be really insecure and feel just intimidated by making videos because I felt like my hair had to be done. I had to have a nice outfit. I had to have my makeup done. Eyebrows needed to be done. While those things may make you look more presentable in a video or may get you a faster click because you do look more attractive or you do look dialed up, that's not me. And going that extra mile to do that for a video would not be me being authentic. And for me, that defeats the whole point of this channel. The point of this channel is for me to release my feelings but also to connect with people as i'm experiencing my my life my journey here's one thing that we can, we have to take into consideration 
I believe social media has really damaged the idea of what women should look like. It's really, really damaged the idea of what women should look like because a lot of the people, women, excuse me, a lot of the women who are top influencers or top um, models or whatever you may have it on Instagram or on social media um, either have BBLs or some type of cosmetic surgery on top of using filters. And the the feature, the feature pool that is created is not one that you're going to get from average people walking down the street. You're not going to see that from most people. So when we see them, we're like, wow, flawless, because the flaws have been taken away, hidden, covered. It presents a more flawless look. And to me, depending on like how it looks, to be honest, it can look abnormal because it's not normal for a person. If you look at someone, even like the most beautiful people that you've seen, if you look at them, you're like, okay, that eye is a little bit lower than the other. And that's the part that makes them human. That's the part that makes them normal. And when you see someone and their face is like perfect, it's like, they almost look like a doll. It doesn't look realistic. It doesn't look normal. But the more we see it, the more normal it becomes, right? So that when you see someone who's outside of that, they don't look like that, they don't fit that image, then they are the ones who look outside of normal. <clears throat> and when there's so many people who do it, then, you know, that average person becomes the average person because they don't look like, you know, a majority or a big group of people. And to be honest, the expectations of how people should look just based off social media, I'm not talking about other beauty standards and norms because that's a whole nother conversation when we're dealing with beauty standards and black women because we're always edged or wedged out of it, even though we are always the prototype of it. So it's that's a whole nother conversation. But for the sake of this conversation, when you're looking at the beauty standards that are constantly shoved and pushed to us, and we're looking at your everyday person who works a nine to five job or your everyday person who works wherever they work, you're starting to see a, a difference. There's a shift in me looking like this. This is my social media expectation. This is the social, social media expectation for me. And this is how I really look. You see what I'm saying? And it's starting to get really, 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 really unrealistic. Like it's starting to look crazy. This is a big part of the reason why for me personally, I not only push myself away from social media to where I don't feel the need to get on it. I'll get on it like maybe once or twice a year. And by social media, I really mean Instagram or other sites other than YouTube. But I, I don't want that constant image of this is how, this is what you need to be doing. This is how you need to look. This is when you need to wear this. Like I don't want that constant pressure because I know how I am. Some people can see that every day, all day and just go on about their day. But for me, I did notice how it started to affect me and affect my self-image. So that pushed me away from using filters that have face alterations. Like if you look at my most recent shorts, I'll still use um, effects that affect like the image of the video itself. Like it might be a dimmer lighting or it might be a, a lighter lighting or it might be a kind of like a color filter that's more like I feel like a natural or bohemian vibe to it so i might change that but i stopped using filters that change features that will make my nose look thinner and that'll make my lips look thinner that might make my eyes look you know a certain way or take away some of my beauty marks or scars i stopped using those because i noticed in videos and pictures when i use those i'd favor and use those videos or pictures and then when i looked at myself without the filter i would be like mm. No, I need it. I need the filter. And that's not okay for me to do to myself because this, I mean, if you look how you look, if you're doing small things that, like I said, just kind of play with the surrounding or something, that's okay. Or like, you know, that change the, the lighting or the image, that's okay. But to completely take away marks or to make a feature look a certain way when that's not how it looks in reality, to me, that's not acceptable for me to do to myself and then favor that over how I truly look. You see, there could be conflict there. So for me personally, I've always been a natural person as well. So 
I've never had weave in my hair. I've had extensions, so like braids and twists, um, faux locks, you know, stuff like that, but I've never had weave in my hair. I always like the more natural look of things. For me personally, like I just never understood or thought of the concept of taking hair from elsewhere and then putting it on top of my hair to where you can't see my hair. Any style that I've had it with hair added has had my hair exposed. So example, like I said again, twists, faux locks, braids, like things like that, that gave me a more natural look. Um, I do believe this is also because my mom's the same way. I've never, my mom's never wore weave in her life. And she's like almost 70. <laughs> I hope she watches this video. But like she's she's never she's never had weave. So that kind of you know that kind of sets the tone too because if that's the first woman that I'm around, if that's the first woman that I um learn an experience from, if she doesn't do something nine times out of ten, you're probably not gonna do it because of the lack of exposure. Everything kind of goes back to me when I went to college, when I went to school. So then I had my big chop, I did my big chop in 10th grade. So by the time I was going to college, my hair had already started to grow out. I've already started experimenting with like different colors and dyes. So my hair was already in its natural state, just dyed. At least my freshman year of college it was, was red. And then um, that was it. <laughs> like that was just natural for me. And I and at school, that's when I started to see the difference between people who had different hair types, textures, locks, whatever it is. But there was more there was more focus in, in, in groups around what you wanted, if that makes any sense. So um, I remember on set Fridays, there was beauty supplies for natural hair or, you know, um, you know, just different expos for natural hair. So there was things that catered to how I felt or how I wanted myself to look in my natural state. And I took a liking to doing those things instead of changing it, instead of being like, well, how can I look like this? Well, how can I do this? I found things that fit me where I was already at in that average state. Now, this is also to say, I do feel like if you are a person who's like, I want to wear makeup, that is fine. If you're a person that's like, I want weed on, this, fine. Fake nails, fake eyelashes, whatever. That's fine. But I feel like it's important to build enough confidence to where you're not doing it because you feel like you won't be accepted otherwise. Or if you are doing it, it's problematic if you feel like you look hideous without, all right? Then we're running into issues because how you are naturally, when you're being your normal self, when you're just everything, natural state, right before you go to bed is your true beauty, not just because it's how you are naturally, but because you're you. You are you in that moment. You're, you don't look or you're not trying to be anything else. And that's the thing I'm really trying to articulate and get across in this video. So I hope that's being clear. But when you are making these alterations or having these different surgeries or using these different filters, it's something that I feel like can help you kind of get into how you look. Like you can kind of play with it. Like there's certain filters that may have red hair. And they're like, oh my God, red actually looks pretty good on me. I might try red hair. You see what I'm saying? But it... It shouldn't make you feel like you absolutely have to do it in order to be beautiful. And if you aren't careful, a lot of things in our society, especially on women, a lot of things in our society can make us feel like we either need to do it to be beautiful or to fit in or otherwise <laughs> we're average and we're pushed out. And I think people are afraid of being average. People are afraid of being normal. But if you look at a group of people, right, walk into the grocery store. And you look at a group of people, especially in that environment, because that's a very, like, natural place. Like, when you go out to eat, people are going to be a little more dialed up. But just say, like, something very simple. Gas station, grocery store. Most people aren't going to be all done up, right? Most people are going to be average-looking. Normal, average outfit, you know. <laughs> they might have makeup, depending on where they're going, but you know what I mean? Like... It's just the idea of being closer to who you are, closer to yourself. And that's really what I mean by average. It's not a good or bad thing. Average means average. <laughs> so it's that state of being your most neutral and being okay with it, accepting it. I also want people, especially if I get some younger girls to get this far in the video, to realize and to understand 
that the lack of self-esteem or the lack of confidence within yourself can lead to bad choices, right? Because then you'll start to desire or want attention, period. And it won't matter the quality of it. Because you don't want your self-image to start affecting your behaviors. You can see that a lot of people who may have a low self-esteem based off how they look, they'll accept anything, the bare minimum of treatment, just because they don't have that confidence. And unfortunately, in this society, a lot of our confidence comes from our looks. I wish there were more people who were like, you know what, I don't care how I look. I know I'm, I'm that girl because of my education, because of my personality, because, because of my determination, because I'm business oriented. Whatever the case may be, I wish there were so many more people who genuinely felt that way. But because we do live in a superficial society, a lot of it is based off of how we look. And, you know, before we get to know anyone, before we get to know any of that about somebody, the first thing we see is how they look. So in a sense, it means a lot, but it kind of doesn't. But you have to take into context that if you don't build up that confidence and that self-esteem, then you can open yourself up to be susceptible to to accept more BS in life just because you don't have that confidence. And again, a lot of it's going to come from having that confidence of this is who I am. This is how I look. I am the average looking person and I'm OK. It's OK. Like when you when people are walking down the street, they may not break their neck to look at me. But they're also not like, what the heck? You know what I'm saying? Whatever the case may be, they're just walking. <laughs> they didn't even see you. No, they see you. <laughs> but you're just, you're just, you're there. You're average. It's okay. This is a video to help you explore different topics and the idea of being an average looking woman. But there are women who are gorgeous. Drop dead gorgeous. Right? Me alone who still get cheated on. Like things still happen to them. Like this isn't happening because of how they look. So how you look only gets you so far. It gets you in the door, it gets you a gate, but you're gonna get treatment from people based off who they are. Um, you can be as beautiful as you want, right? And someone can still hurt you or cheat on you because they're hurtful and they're a cheater. That's it, that's who they are. You could be kind of funny looking <laughs> and still get cheated on because that person is a cheater. So don't focus so much on the superficiality of things being so centered around looks. But as I know, it is a big part. We can't act like it's not. The best thing that you can do is to build confidence. Love you. Love the way that you look. Love the way that you sound. Love your flaws. Love your beauty marks. <laughs> Love your your favorite features, just love it all and and be okay with being average. Be okay with being you because at your best, you are you. At your worst, you are you. But you're in a spot where you can always create and protect your craft. And again, in this superficial society, a lot of it does come down to looks. So we can't just sit there and be like, it's not about, it's not about looks because it is. And I wish it wasn't, but it is. And the best thing you can do is to build your confidence. Create a craft, build confidence in that craft. If you have a talent, build confidence in that talent, whatever it is, build that confidence and be okay with just simply being the average looking person. You don't have to try so hard to meet beauty standards. You don't have to try so hard to look a certain way and subject yourself to different cosmetic surgeries just so that you can look like something when you know deep down your beauty generates from who you are deep down inside with all that said don't forget to take care of yourself mind body and soul and in the comments drop down what are some of your practices that you use to build confidence in looking like your natural self again there's nothing wrong with wearing makeup or fake nails or fake lashes but it's only to enhance how you look you shouldn't feel like it's a necessity what are some of the practices that you have that make you ground yourself in your natural beauty? Let me know. Thank you guys for watching. I really appreciate you watching this video. And I hope that this kind of gives you some insight or perspective of what I mean when I say the average looking girl. I feel like I'm beautiful.
and that's what matters <laughs> thank you for watching i'll see you guys next time bye